You need to know about this one common mistake that most adults make when they're trying to reconcile a broken relationship with their parents, either a mom and or a dad, stepmom, stepdad. Uh, because if you, if you step in this mud puddle when you go to reconcile that relationship, it's just going to cause more pain, confusion, frustration, awkwardness in the relationship. It's not necessary. And with just a little bit of foresight, a little bit of wisdom, I think you can avoid that and really go about it with the grace of God. And what you're going to see is a totally different result. So there was a woman who called. She's been through the greatest journey here in Lucas, Texas. And then she called because she was about to get in a sticky situation. And, and she was like, what do I do? How do I handle this? And she had already made this mistake and was experiencing the awkwardness, the difficulty of it. And we were able to get that thing turned around. And I want you to hear her testimony of a complete flip of result once she got this thing ironed out and, and did it in the grace of God with what I'm going to suggest to you. It, it totally changed the whole dynamics of her family. And it's very, very simple, okay? So here's the deal. Right before I read her letter, I want to remind you. You know how we walk through those four steps of the greatest journey? We reveal the pain of our past, right? Instead of conceal it, uh, we rebuke or confront the sin of another, the sin of the person who uh, wounded or hurt us. It wasn't our fault uh, what they did, but then step three, we have to be willing to repent of our sin, our reaction of bitterness and unforgiveness towards them, and then we can begin to restore, step four, restore the relationship with forgiveness. We're restored at the heart level by the forgiveness of the Heavenly Father for our sin. And then that same forgiveness flows through us towards those who have hurt us as we forgive them from the heart. Like Jesus says in Matthew 18, right? So those are the steps. So most of us take those steps kind of literally and we say, okay, if I re had to rebuke or confront the sin of another first when I did the greatest journey and then repent of my sin, now when I go to a parent to sort of reconcile that broken relationship, I need to rebuke or confront them first before we can get to a place of repentance. And that doesn't go well. Usually that's met with defensiveness or justification or excuses or not validating the pain or having a totally different narrative than what, what we know happened. Why? Well, they're not in a healing process. They don't have probably the biblical language for reconciliation. They're kind of taken off guard and they feel attacked. We don't feel validated. So the whole thing just gets messy. So what we have learned is to reverse those steps two and three and lead with repentance. That's the humility that softens hearts first. And then we can get to the confrontation or talking about the pain that happened back there. Why is that so critical? Why does that work? Because it's not just about their sin uh, that happened so long ago. It's also about our sin. They sinned and they hurt us, but then we reacted and we sinned against them and dishonored them with unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, vengeance. And so there's this thing of leading with repentance for our sin, and then that opens the door. So I want you to see how this wisdom worked in this woman's life. She had called me. Uh, she said it, the letter of confrontation did not work with her mom. So I said, consider leading with repentance. Here's what she uh, writes. She started out talking about her how her relationship with her dad was not close. It was not good. Um, they were on a, a road trip going back home together, and... Uh, she said she was going back to her parents' house and she said, Ben, since our last conversation, it's been heavy on my heart to write a letter of repentance to my parents. So she's leading with repentance. I woke up early one morning. I walked upstairs, pulled out my computer, asked the Lord what I needed to say. I touched many points throughout my childhood and up into my 30s. I was very nervous about reading it to them. I had it printed out, folded underneath my computer. We're all sitting in the living room talking about random things. My mom was about to get up, run to the store for medicine, when I abruptly said, don't get up, I need to read something to both of you. So she says, I unfold, unfolded my paper and I thought to myself, am I even gonna make it through this letter? My heart felt like it was about to literally burst open. And then she said, I got through the letter 
And it was like all the hurt was gone in an instant. And here's the amazing part. My dad gets up. Remember, this is the dad she did not have a close relationship with. My dad gets up and wraps me in his arms, hugging me so tight and says he loves me. And Ben, I felt it. I felt his love for me, love that I did not feel as a child growing up. And then the same with my mom. This trip has changed my life, Ben. The Lord orchestrated every single detail, and I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful to both you and Katie for every ounce you've poured into the greatest journey, every minute you've spent talking and encouraging me. Forgiveness is freedom. Notice that. It was when she repented to her parents she felt their forgiveness, even though they maybe should have known better. Um, and maybe they just weren't able. Uh, there was enough brokenness in their own lives. They weren't able to get there. But she led with repentance first. She felt their forgiveness. That opens the door now for her to talk about the pain she experienced. And then the grace of God begins to work in the family. So, um, and then she says, forgiveness is freedom. Um, the forgiveness of the father on her because of her repentance and then her ability to then totally release her parents. Um, what I'm not talking about in, in this kind of a scenario is severe abuse where the relationship is still dangerous, where's the, where there's the potential for more abuse that's actually not safe. Okay, I'm not talking about going into that situation with repentance be, because that can often be manipulated and used for more abuse. I'm not talking about being a doormat for someone else's uh, stuff. What I'm talking about here is what happens a lot where it's more subtle, the relationship dynamics have shifted, it's not unsafe, it's just awkward, hard, painful. Um, and in those cases, if we lead with repentance, it works. Uh, the grace of God comes on that humility, and then the spirit of reconciliation, the, the, the Holy Spirit that reconciles people to the Heavenly Father and to each other, His anointing begins to operate in the family dynamics once humility comes in. So <clears throat> I hope that helps you guys to see that little tweak, that shift in the steps as you walk this out. The same is true for lots of other relationships. It just is the most obvious when it comes to parents because that tends to be a really difficult one. Hopefully that helps you. <clears throat> if you're curious about The Greatest Journey, you can go to freedomlifetoday.org, click the button that says take the journey and you'll learn all about it. We have online resources that are free in YouTube, 10 videos that walk you through a 10 week process. We have a, a full color um, course guide that's printed. It's available through Amazon that you can get that goes along with those 10 videos. You can do that anywhere. We also have 10 week courses that we offer from time to time here in Lucas, Texas through Resonate Life Church. Uh, as well as Zoom courses. So if you're interested in a Zoom course, jumping in on that, email me, ben at freedomlifetoday.org. Uh, shoot me a comment or a question in the comment section below. Would love to be able to discuss more um, and hope that this has encouraged you guys.